If you're looking for tips and advice on how to start teaching online in a professional way and give your students the best possible experience that you can right now afford, then you found the right video. Because here I'm going to give you various solutions that go from free and very simple ones, yet effective, to more complete and professional looking ones. So let's just go right into it. As everybody knows already, this time that we are living, we must all face the situation of being locked down in our houses. Because of this situation, I've been constantly asked by fellow musicians who now see online teaching as the only solution to keep on with the study plans with the student and eventually also to prevent a too big hit on your own personal economy, being that we don't know how long it's gonna be until we can travel again to play concerts. Fortunately for us, the online tutoring one-to-one -one works really good and it has more advantages that you might actually anticipate. So in this video, I'm going to show you which tools you need and you can use for online teaching from the most simple ones to the most advanced ones, just so they can adapt to your needs, to your resources, to your budget and to your goals. So if you're here to watch this video, I hope it will solve all these questions that you have about online teaching but if please you have any other doubt or question don't hesitate to write it in the comments below and i will answer you as soon as possible so i've been running the online academy of maestro carlo marchione as well as my own teaching portal so all the information that i'm going to give you are things that i know for a fact that they work and they work well and we apply them so i'm sure in this video you will find great ideas that will help you face these unprecedented times in the best and most satisfactory way obviously the very first thing you need to make sure that you have is enough internet bandwidth you need to run a minimum of 1.5 megabits per second to make sure that your video call in high quality will be steady and will not freeze Obviously, the more participants you add, the more bandwidth you will require. But in general terms, I think nowadays everybody's internet can hold up a video call. But in any case, you can ask your student to run a speed test by entering to this website, just to make sure that everyone has enough internet speed to have a very nice, smooth lesson. Otherwise, it's not gonna be very pleasant to work and it's not fun to have a student frozen half the time. So let's start with the most simple solution to start teaching online. The first option is a very obvious one. It's something that you probably know already, but I'm going to show you how you can improve the experience with such easy means. So as obvious as it is, it is using Skype. Why? Because all you need is simply a computer with a webcam and a microphone and any laptop has already this built in or any telephone or any tablet. But let's not forget that as a teacher, you need to be able to write stuff on the score for the student to practice afterwards. So all you need to do is to make sure that you have a software that can read PDF, which it comes by default by any computer, but make sure that you can have the pencil option so that you can draw on the score. iOS has the PDF reader already with these features built in, I'm sure Windows does also, but otherwise you can get the PDF expert or any other piece of software. All you need to do is to start a video call with a student, share the window with the PDF open, and you're good to go to start writing all your annotations or everything you need during the lesson. And the student will be able to follow this live through their own screen without having to bother to write anything or having multiple papers around. You both will be able to work on the same page just as a regular lesson. The good news for the teachers out there is that this way the student can never lose the score anymore. Another advantage that I have experienced as a teacher is that you always have all the scores updated from one lesson to the other. So you can see the progress and you can easily see in a glimpse what has been done, what has been worked and what you're gonna work next. Okay, I'm going to recommend you also some extras, which for me, in my humble opinion, they are very necessary. I would highly recommend adding an external microphone. This goes for the teachers, but also for the students if they plan to have regular online lessons. Remember that after all, you're working with music, so try to get the best microphone you can afford. You will find great microphones like this one, 
that can be plugged via USB and they require no installation so it's going to improve the sound quality a lot more which that's going to make automatically your lesson a lot more efficient and a lot better. These microphones you can also use them afterwards to record your class concerts, your performances or anything you want with it. So they have actually lots of uses and for any musicians they are very very practical. So I highly recommend that either way you buy one of these microphones. The other option would be to buy an interface with a microphone because those ones sound really good and if you happen to have any interest about studio recording or you're planning to buy something like this for future recordings of yours then go ahead and check because there are so many bundles and so many good ones that are rather inexpensive and I think that for about 200 euros or even less you can find really nice ones Drawing with the mouse becomes a pain in the neck because it actually is you can also think about getting a graphics tablet so you can just write like you would do on a paper. You can find tablets like the Wacom for about 100 euros or even less. If you have an iPad or an Android tablet, then you will need to consider the next option because Skype does not allow to share the screen of your tablet directly and at least not in an easy way. So not without entering in virtual machines and all this stuff. So I'm trying to make it easy for you so you better go straight to the second option. An important tip for all of those who in that moment maybe don't have the budget to buy a microphone or anything like that, at least what you should absolutely do is to go to the settings on Skype and turn off the auto gain adjustment. And like this you will avoid the microphone auto adjusting the volume settings and take away this weird intermittent mutting that it happens when we play guitar through the inbuilt microphones. Because let's face it, Skype was intended for human video calls with voice and speech, not so much for guitar players. Sorry for that. Remember also that if you happen to have a camera which is not so great, lighting can make a huge difference. If you don't have access to any studio lighting or you don't have any free lamp around the house, you can simply try to find a quiet location that is in front of a window. Keep in mind that the light source should never be coming from behind you, otherwise through the camera the other person is going to see a very dark image of you. So if you're trying to show them something on an instrument, it's going to be very difficult for them to see. The second option is the one that I personally use and that I find that it has so many more advantages, it looks a lot more professional and it has many features that can help you out if you're considering online teaching not just as a temporary thing, but maybe as a future ongoing activity. So Zoom was built to host professional meetings online and I have indeed experienced that it's a lot more steady from the image, the sound and the quality overall. The great thing of Zoom is that it offers a free plan which is for one-to-one -one video calls that is for free and it has lots of the features that you also have in the premium versions or at least it does have enough features for musicians to teach online in a very good level. On the other hand, if you have to have group lessons or you want to give master classes or lectures or maybe organize class concerts with your mates, you can also host sessions until 100, 300, I believe. But that is an option that I would only consider if your conservatory or academy pays for it because it's based on a monthly subscription. A very interesting feature is that you can set it to automatically record the session that you can send afterwards to the student for educational purposes. One of the features that I like the most about how Zoom is made is the fact that my students do not need to have an account anywhere. As long as I have my account in Zoom, everything I do is I will send them the link of the online meeting and all they need to do is to click on that link and they will open it in the browser. Eventually they can choose to download the Zoom application, but if they don't want, they can simply open up with the browser and have the vehicle there directly in the browser without any download. Aside from this, if you regularly have lessons with Zoom, yes, I would recommend for the student to download the app because it's very smooth, it's everything there, and overall it's a very neat experience. With Zoom, actually, you have access to lots of tools, lots of sharing options, and lots of interesting things that can make the lesson online even richer than lesson in location. Aside from this, it also has features like having a whiteboard available. 
So anytime you need a white piece of paper to write exercises or to write any kind of note, you just click on it, it opens, and at the end of the session, it gets saved and so the student can have it for practicing. If you want to take advantage of the iPad that you already have and you want to use it with Zoom for your online teaching, you can easily connect it via USB or via AirPlay. In this way, you can write in your device with your digital pencil as you usually do, while sharing the annotations that you're making during your lesson in a super comfortable way. I personally started to use an iPad for my own practice sessions and music sheet organization and storage, and I must say that it's indeed an amazing feature to add to your online teaching. It makes it really enjoyable. Thanks to this simple solution, I finally don't waste my time trying to write with a mouse and it goes slow and then the student has to wait. It's a lot more dynamic and more natural because it's just like writing on a paper. Important to know anyways is that this option is currently only available for connecting your iPad, so Android tablets are not yet supported, but I'm hoping that because Zoom is growing more and more, they will soon add this feature. Otherwise, you could give it a try to the other platform I mentioned, this Cisco WebEx. It seems very good. I personally like it very, very much. But the only thing that is keeping me from using it right now is the fact that I do enjoy having a link and my students not needing to make an account anywhere just so that I can make this switch over to the online learning the simplest and easiest for my students. In any case, it's worth keeping an eye to this platform because it's also for free and it is very, very powerful as well. If you're hosting a lecture with a Zoom, it also has features like the raise hand, the chat, polls, and different kinds of things. So the list of features is really long. So for all these reasons, I much prefer the Zoom rather than Skype. But if you want to use Zoom, please go into the settings and set up everything beforehand because there are some things for you to check and decide what you want and what you don't want because sometimes having too many options can be distracting, so try to set it before you start to teach. Of course, I'm aware that in the market there are several other online meeting platforms, like it could be the Google Hangouts and some others. But so far, these two platforms are the ones that, one, the Skype is very known, is very familiar, and is very easy to use. And second, the Zoom is another option, which is very, very professional, and I can ensure you that it works really good. So if you go for one option or the other, I'm sure that you will get good results. So I hope my video could give some light to the doubts that you have on how I should start teaching online and what do I need, or how could I make it better, or how can I make it simple, how can I keep it on my budget. But if you have still any other question, please write in the comments below. As you see, all those solutions are for free, except from the fact that if for yourself you want to upgrade your gear and buy more professional looking one, that is always a great thing to do. I think that if you have a small quantity saved for upgrading your gear, it would be a great idea for you to do that because this is going to last you for a long time. You can reuse it for so many other projects that you have, not only for online teaching. And aside from that, online teaching is here to stay, no matter if we are in an emergency situation or not. So let me know what you think about my recommendations. I hope you found them useful and I really hope that these tips will help you in this time of changes and strange things happening but i believe we can still try to make the best of it and use this time for fruitful things practice learning and finding new and creative ways to make music if you think that online teaching could be a real future working option for you in this case you will have to have a website where your students can find your offers make the reservations complete the payments and manage their bookings so please, if you are interested in that and you would like me to follow up with such a video of a tutorial of how you could eventually do that, I will make a dedicated video if we pass the 60 likes so that I know that you are interested on this video and I will show you how I build these two online academies and how you can set one for yourself. Thank you very much for watching the video. I'll be looking forward to read your feedback and I'll see you in the next one.